Greetings, this is Dr. Andy Johnson, your favorite academic writing instructor. Today we are going to learn <clears throat> a little bit about citations, and this is based on a chapter in my book, Academic Writing Process and Product, by Roman and Littlefield. Taking you right to the page, not showing you my bulbous, bald head today. Why in the heck do we cite in the first place? It sets your work in a theoretical context. It's not just you thinking stuff. That's why we have a review of the literature. A review of the literature is not a review of what you think, but in creating a literature review in academic writing. It is a review of what the literature says about your question. And remember, good academic writing starts with a question you do a review of the literature to answer that question. We also cite because it gives credit for an idea or for research. One of the greatest sins in academic writing is stealing someone else's idea. By citing it, you are giving that person credit for the idea or you're citing that research uh, study. And third, no one cares what you think. The citation lends credibility to your arguments or declarative statements. Maybe you're just making stuff up. Maybe you're full of baloney. All right. If I am, there's a whole lot of other people who are full of baloney. If you are citing your articles, citing your declarative statements, and I'll give you an example of that. The reference list for my class, and this is Dr. Andy Johnson talking. With any drafts you submit, always include your reference list, and that's at the bottom of the page, so we can see what sources you are using and the types of sources do matter. All right, we'll talk first about in-text citations. That means as you're writing, you see these. In-text uh, citations are different than the reference list, all right, you see at the bottom. And again, the purpose is to lend credibility and to support your ideas and give credit. You're not stealing ideas. In a literature review, you have these declarative statements, but you don't want to have, you want to have few of them that aren't supported. Very few declarative statements should be included that are not supported with a citation. Phonics instruction should take place within a meaningful context. Why? Why? I don't believe you. It's a declarative statement. You must support it. Should take place within a meaningful context. Smith. All right. That lends credibility. It's not just me. There's an art and a science. You're building your case. You're setting a work in a theoretical context, but you're also teaching and explaining. And I've said this in a previous. Uh, uh, previous video. Good academic writer is a good explainer of things. You have to picture your audience and imagine that your audience knows nothing and you have to teach them things. You want to say it, cite it, and support it or explain it. Generally, you have the declarative statement, you cite it, but then you explain your idea. Now, once you cite the idea in a paragraph, you don't need to cite every explanation of the idea. But with a new idea, you must cite. Generally, you don't use back-to-back -back citations of the same author. And let me show you that. Phonics instruction should take place within a meaningful context. Smith, this means that analytic... Smith again, generally not. I can cite this first declarative statement and then I can explain this idea. And you see the good example here. All right. Say it, cite it, and then support or explain it if necessary. Now here's, uh, <coughs> here's work uh, from a book I was writing. And this is somewhat controversial, but I want the readers to know that I did a, an extensive literature review. One common view of dyslexia is based on the premise that reading is simply sounding out words. And all these people said that right there. And now here, 
I'm using the rest to explain that that declarative statement. That's me right there, by the way. Notice how I cited the original idea with lots of citations. It shows an extensive lit review and it shows a lot of people are saying the same thing, not just a few. And I spent the rest of the paragraph explaining. Now notice here, since students with dyslexia have difficult sounding out words, what is needed is more sounding out word instruction with a lot of sounding out word practice. And all these people have said this. Now I explain it right here, and this is a book, so I got a little bit snarky here. The goal of this type of instruction is to create good sounder outers. The thinking is that if students were good sounder outers, their reading problems would vanish, except this is not the case. All right. Now this is a book. This is not a, it's a literature review within a book. <laughs> but as one who's been writing it for 27 years, this is a book. It's different from an article that I would send in. So after 27 years, I've given myself permission to be a little snarky when writing books. All right. What usually happens is that students get marginally better at sounding out words in isolation in the short term is measured by sounding out word measures. However, these sounding out word skills do not transfer to, to the reading of authentic text. And I'm citing this person here. Uh, students' ability to create meaning does not improve, and I'm citing this person here. Two important declarative statements I want the reader to know. These are not my ideas. I have done a literature review, and these are well-received, uh, well-extensively-reviewed authors here. A little snarky, it's a book. Supporting ideas. Don't believe me when I make this statement. But I've cited it so it lends credibility and you see the theoretical context. It builds a theoretical context for this. And again, phonological model, okay, cited, cited, explaining here. Second idea, all right, cited, explain, cited. Third idea, cited, explain. Fourth idea, cited cited all right so the process is of course you need to have good notes that means you need to critically read and take notes having that question you only record the ideas directly related to that question i needed to make a strong case for this so i used cited sentences to make my case <clears throat> so the easy part is what the in-text citation should look like and you can see that there, <clears throat> author, comma, year, Miller, comma, 2021. More than one author, you include the and sign there, not the written word, within the parentheses. All right. More than one source, alphabetical order by first author, and you have that semicolon in between. And you see them there, alphabetical order. And the reference list, again, <clears throat> that's the easy part. Quick review, again, this is taken directly from my book. <clears throat> one author, one article. Recent study found that apples were better than oranges. It's better just to say apples are better than oranges. This is a, a little stronger uh, type of writing. <clears throat> this is the best. If you include the author's name in your declarative statement, just the year. A study by Carson found that apples were better than oranges. <clears throat> I don't like to bump into the author's name. It's a little distracting when you're reading it. So just say it and cite it. More than one author. Use the and system. We talked about that. Use the and system. College students prefer. Okay. More than one article. And again, you put them in alphabetical order according to the author's first name. And I call this the piling on technique. If you really want to hit home that <clears throat> a lot of people have said that, you, <clears throat> it, you really lend credibility by citing all the authors that you have found that say that thing, all the articles. And again, citing by name, Carson recommends apples and oranges two or more authors within the text, the and sign. Rule of thumb, parentheses, the, uh, the and sign, in the text, the and word. 
And again, this reads, Carson recommends apples and found that, all right. This, uh, uh, it's generally stronger if you can say it and cite it. Stylistic recommendation, less effective. And as I've said before, don't let other authors, other voices dominate your work. Reuter found that. Jones and Smith reported. Keaton suggested that. I keep bumping into these names. It's just, this is much more effective. Peach ice cream was found to be dangerous. Consumption, much easier to read, much stronger writing. You're just saying it and citing it. You know, you're not telling us who found or suggested or reported or said. All right, just say it and cite it. Both are technically correct, but this is much easier to read. All right. You keep bumping into people. And again, Hansen says, Lars and Galaxine suggest, Perkins found. Uh, hate it. Much easier here. Much easier there. A note about alphabetical order. It's always alphabetical by first name and semicolon between. Okay. One thing you don't do, you never, <laughs> never rearrange the order of the name. For instance, uh, Danielson and Anderson. You don't make it Anderson and Danielson just to make it alphabetical. It's alphabetical order <clears throat> by the names of the authors, first name. Why is that? Because the person whose name occurs first is generally the lead author on something. They are uh, uh, they have more uh, uh, um, more prestige in being the lead work. They did most of the work and they are in charge of stuff. So you never ever rearrange the order of the authors. There's an art to it, academic writing, in that it's a stylistic, it's an expression of you. Writers aren't standardized products with uniform ways of thinking and doing. So it's a certain amount of art. It's a science in that there are stylistic elements that you must adhere to the APA style or MLA we're focusing on APA but it's a craft as well a craft is something you learn over time again the common question do I have to cite every single sentence in my work that contains an idea that didn't come directly from my head that would look silly for instance don't do this this is all Smith 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 it no you generally say it once and you can you can describe his ideas you can paraphrase his or her ideas smith's ideas here all right you're explaining but you've given smith credit for the big idea here and then you're explaining smith's ideas generally you don't have back-to-back -back citations of the same author in a paragraph however if it's interrupted by a paragraph then you do want to Recredit that author. All right, just some ideas on citations.